Good morning and happy Easter day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Greeting from the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church, 106 County Road, 1111, Atlanta, Texas, zip code 75551. I am your host, Pastor Elizabeth Maxey, to the Shallow Church family. We miss you all and keep praying for our cure that we may soon be back in service again. Amen? Amen. This is Resurrection Day. This is a day to enjoy that Jesus Christ rose for us all. So let us pray. Our good and gracious Master, we thank you for another day, a brand new day we've never seen before, a day that wasn't promised or guaranteed because of your grace and mercy, Lord. You bless us with another day, and for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all our dignitaries of our local and state level and nation, Lord, Father God. We thank you for the President of the United States, Lord. Continue to bless him, give him clarity, and give him understanding, Lord. And our local dignitaries, Father God, bless them all that they make good decisions, good godly decisions, Father God. Continue to bless this church and this community, Father. Bless the elder members of this church, that they bring their wisdom to this church, Lord. And bless the children, Lord, that they would take guidance and grow up to be strong Christian believers, Father God. But most of all, we thank you for your daughter and son, Jesus, and what he did on that old rugged cross that he bear all our burdens, Lord, that we might have a right to the tree of life. But that, Lord, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our script reading today will come from the New Testament, the New Testament, the Gospel according to John, the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, Beginning with verse 10. Chapter 15, beginning with verse 10. Amen? Amen. And scripture reading is, beginning with verse 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. May God bless his word. I'd like to use for a subject for just a little while. He took my place. He took my place. Today is Easter Sunday. It is a time to reflect on a man who died for me and rose for us all. He took our place. This man, Jesus Christ, who refused the grave because he had a better things to do, like taking care of us, but they'll always say thank you. This man refused the grave now, we're still on the topic of uh, creating a healthy church. And to create a healthy church, church, you must remember and know Jesus Christ took your place on the cross. Having said that, get your Bibles. It's God's time now. In these scriptures, Jesus is talking to his disciples before he goes to the cross. If you're looking at your Bibles right now, if you find this text is written in red, that's because Jesus is speaking. Amen? John 15, beginning with verse 10, reads, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Church, this can be done only by the Holy Spirit working within us, which he does according to our faith, in Christ and the cross. Now Jesus kept his father's commandment to him that he was to go to the cross for us all. Lord, thank you. Church, have you kept your father's commandments? Church, are you abiding in his love? Church, would you die on the cross for my sins? I didn't think so. Oh, but Jesus Christ took my sin to the cross. And for that, Lord, I say thank you. He took my place on the cross, and he took your place on the cross. 
Amen. Now look at verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. My God. Church, Jesus' joy remains in us only as our faith is properly placed in him and the cross. In other words, a Christian believer cannot know full joy until he properly understands what took place on the cross. Only then will you properly understand Christ and what he did on the cross. Let the church say amen. Some time ago, I preached about finding your joy. See, don't worry about my joy. Find your joy in Christ. Jesus wants his joy inside you, and he wants your joy to be real. You see, Satan can tickle your flesh for just a little while. Sister Barbara, but real joy, y'all ain't praying for me. I said real joy comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Look at verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Church, we should at least love one another because Jesus Christ loved us all enough to die for us. Somebody ought to say thank you, sir. Okay, now we're getting down to the meat. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say love them if they're cute. Y'all ain't praying for me still. He didn't say love them if they smell good. He didn't say love them if they're wealthy. No, he said love them even if they're poor. Love them even if they smell bad. Y'all ain't still talking to me. Love them and love them all with all your heart. I'm talking about real love. See, mom and daddy love you, but mom and daddy couldn't go to the cross for you. But Jesus Christ did. And for that law, we say thank you. Verse 13 reads, Greater love hath no man that this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. My God. The cross is the epitome of love. But can Jesus Christ call you friend? Can he call you friend? In other words, he laid down his life for you to make your life better. Sister Angela, he took your sins and nailed them to the cross. Sister Nikki, he took your pain and nailed it to the cross. He took your trouble relationship and nailed it to the cross. He took your bills, oh y'all ain't talking to me now, and nailed them to the cross. He took your alcoholism and nailed it to the cross. And he took your drug addiction and nailed it to the cross. So now I ask you a question. Why are you still carrying them around? I ask you, why are you still carrying your burdens around? He already took your place. Therefore, he nailed your burdens to the cross. Somebody needs to be happy up in here. I said he nailed your burdens to the cross. He, he asked you for one day out of your week. And some say they have better things to do. Lord, help me today. Brother David, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, the golf course is full and the car wash is busy. But Jesus said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen? Amen. The reason is found in verse 14. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you. Obeying God is a problem in a nutshell because we want, I said we, want to do things our way, not God's way. Then after we beat our heads against the wall and fail, I said then we cry out to God. When we get tired of playing God, we cry out to God. With our tail tucked between our legs, like a hurt dog. Y'all ain't talking to me. But look at verse 15. We find that God has no secrets. He said, henceforth, I call you not servants, 
For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friend. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. And the songwriter said, it's no secret. What God can do, what he's done for us, what he will do for you. Somebody else said, thank you. Because he took your place, you're worthy of his blessings. Because he took your place, he is worthy of your praise. Somebody ought to praise God up in here this morning because he is worthy of our praise. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we ought to act like it then. Now the good news in verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Church, I'm so tired of folk talking about I found Jesus in 1988. How are you going to find Jesus if you lost? Jesus was not lost. You were. So Jesus found you. You didn't find Jesus. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. And whatsoever you asked of the Father in my name, he may give it you. No other God can make this promise. No other God has this much power. Some of us, he knows you by your rotten fruit. And he still wants to bless you. Are you worthy? The answer is yes. That's why he took your place. And he refused the grave because he had better things to do for you and for me. Now look at verse 17. It's going to make somebody mad. These things, I command you that ye love one another. Oh my goodness. That means, yes, you got to love her. That means, yes, you got to love him. Oh, you can't just love your four and no more. You got to love my children as well as your children. You got to love my friends as well as your friends. You got to love everybody because Jesus loves us all. See, I serve a man who wouldn't stay dead. Church, he refused the grave. And because of that, you should reserve your place in heaven. And you should do it right now. But you got to get right down here before you can go up there. Amen? Amen. Now look at verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. You see, Satan hates all that is good. He hates all that is holy. He hates all that is right. So somebody tell me why are some of us so in love with Satan? Because Satan is not capable of loving you back. But oh, how I love Jesus because he first Love me. And for that, Lord, I say thank you. Verse 19 reads, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Let me repeat that. God said, I chose you out of the world. Therefore the world hates you. I hope you understand this, church, because if you doing what's right and people attack you, God said, expect this. Those people with those pitchforks, oh my God, in the hand, they work for Satan. So be proud of who you are and whose you are. Be proud of that. Because, church, one day, Jesus chose me out of the world, and now I choose to serve him. Let's look at verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. I hope y'all didn't miss that. Jesus said, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. That's why he took your place. That's why he took my place. 
And that's why he gave us life that we might have it more abundantly. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. But look at verse 21, says it all. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. In other words, they don't know God for themselves. If they're talking about you, they don't know God. If they're trying to make you look small, they don't know God for themselves. If they set trap for you, they don't know God. If they smile in your face and all the time they're trying to take your place, I'm talking about backstabbers, they don't know God. But Lord, I know you because I know you for the part of my sins. But look at verse 23. It says, he that hated me hated my father also. But I love you, Father, and I thank you for everything you're doing for me. But this is only the beginning of Jesus Christ's story because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have ever lasting life. Church, God sent his Son and his name was Jesus. His name was Jesus the Christ. He came to love. He came to heal. He came to forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove that my Savior lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he still lives, all my fear is gone. Because he still lives, he holds the future. Coronavirus might have you running scared, but life is still worth living just because my Savior lives. An empty grave is there to show my Savior lives. So church, we should serve the one who refused to stay in the grave. I'm so glad he had better things to do for me and for you. One day he took my place on a cross with my name on it. One day he took your place on a cross with your name on it. Then he died for us all with three nails in the cross. And for that, Lord, I say thank you. He took one nail in his left hand for all my sins. He took one nail in his right hand for all your sins. Then he took one nail in both feet for all the sins of the world. And he hung, bled, and died on that old rugged cross. And he allowed himself to be buried in Joseph's brand new barber tomb. And his bar because he wasn't going to need it long. And he lays there all Friday evening. And he lays there all Friday night. He lays there all day Saturday. He lays there all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning he rode with all power. And I thank God he rose. And I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. And I thank God for the power that God gave me. And I thank God that Jesus took my place. And for that, Lord, I say thank you. The doors of the church are open today. Would there be one today that is willing to come and say, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, now is a good time. It's Easter Sunday. What a better day to rise up and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. We will now have our communion service this is a good day to have it because this is a Resurrection Sunday. And for that, Lord, I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Prepare yourself now for communion, child of church members. This is a good day. Our scripture reading today will come from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11, begin with verse 23. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do you often, and you drink it in remembrance of me. For not often you drink of this bread, eat of this bread, and drink of this cup, you do show a lot of death till he comes. Wherefore, who says to eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye may come not together to come to the nation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. May God bless his word. Amen. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this bread that represents your son's broken body. We pray that we take with a pure heart and a clean mind. Amen. Take. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this cup that represents your son's shed blood in the New Testament. We pray that we take with a pure heart and a clean mind that do often in remembrance of you. Amen. Take. And let the church say amen. Amen. I thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you enjoyed the service. And we will see you again on next Sunday at 11 o'clock. May God bless you. And may God keep you is my prayer.